What we looked at so far is a model with a log normal likelihood but with completely ridiculous priors and we know that they are ridiculous because of the, the types of data that the model generates from the prior, in the prior predictive distribution. So can we come up with a more reasonable set of priors that produce more realistic data? And this, is an, this is an important question that we can ask and we can answer this quite easily using these computational tools that I'm showing you, right? So let's say that we assume that uh, the average reading time or reaction time is, uh, is the exponent of six log milliseconds. So whatever that number is and with a standard deviation of 1.5. You could of course plot this now, okay? Using the denorm function, you can plot this distribution and that's a very good exercise to get a sense of whether this is a reasonable uh, prior specification or not. Or you could generate data from this normal distribution, right? R norm data, exponentiate it and then look at the distribution of that data to see if it reflects your b beliefs about average reaction times, right? And this is the, the sigma uh, prior. It's a truncated prior uh, because you cannot have less than zero milliseconds standard deviation, right? So for this parameter, you will truncate it at zero with a standard deviation of one. And there's more to say about truncated priors, of course, and truncated distributions in general. It's all in the textbook, but we don't need more information than that right now, okay? What will change in the model specification in BRMS is very little actually. So we have um, the, um, we, what we're going to do is we're going to define a log normal likelihood of course, instead of the Gaussian, right? That's a big change that we are making. And we are going to specify the priors in this prior parameter. We go to six, 1.5 normal prior. This is on the log scale, right, for the intercept and we are specifying, this is very important, we are specifying a, nor, specifying a normal 0, 1 prior, mean 0 standard deviation 1, for the sigma parameter. But notice that I don't write anything here about truncation. I don't need to. One of the beauties of the BRMS package is that it just takes care of the fact that it knows that sigma cannot have a negative value, right? And so it truncates this, this prior for you, right, internally, right? If you were writing pure stand code, which you would do if you're doing more, more advanced Bayesian modeling, right, writing customized models, then you would have to pay attention to, you know, the prior specifications and so on. But here, the uh, stand takes, uh, BRMS takes care of this for you, right? So notice what I'm doing here. I'm specified here a new command that you haven't seen before and it says sample prior equal to only. What this is doing is that it's, although it's going to take the data as input, it's not gonna look at that data at all. It's only going to produce samples from the prior. So this is one way to use the BRMS package to produce prior predictive distributions. You do have to specify the data frame in the model, but the model, the package will not, this function will not use that data to produce prior predictive data, right? So this is a very convenient function here. And so one thing you'll notice is that there's another command here that I put in this control command with adapt delta equal to 0.9. I had to put this in because the, uh, the prior predictive data sometimes has some convergence problems and you can change the parameter settings inside the MCMC sampling uh, algorithm that is used by Stan. You can, you can change it so that those convergence problems don't happen. I won't discuss this much, but uh, you can look this up in the textbook and also in the Stan manual. It's discussed in quite a lot of detail in the Stan manual, but we discussed this briefly in the book. So it's not important right now for us to worry about this control parameter. All we need to know is that we need this control parameter to generate those prior predictive distributions uh, such, uh, such that we get you know, convergence when we, when we produce the data, okay? So what's more interesting, however, is what the data look like under these more, um, I would say, semi-informative or regularizing priors, right? So in this case, the data looks very interesting. So the observed mean is somewhere here, I believe. This line here should be the observed mean. Uh, it was something like in this area, right? If I remember correctly. And what we are observing, looking at here is the prior predictive distribution of the means uh, under 
repeated generation of prior predicted data. And you see that it's a pretty reasonable distribution now, right? This, this is a reasonable reflection of, uh, of uh, mean reading times under, you know, future data sets. Of course, it's a little bit, little bit allowing too much, uh, too slow a reading time. So an average of 10 seconds is probably too, not so great. So it's not optimal. You could come up with better priors, I'm sure to obtain more realistic prior predictive distributions, but it's good enough. It's not crazy like the previous example that I showed you. In the previous lecture with those uniform priors, we were all over the place in like in hundreds of seconds or something like that. That was completely insane, right? So this is a lot more reasonable in, in comparison, right? And here I've computed some more statistics. These are also in the textbook for distribution of the means of the prior predictive data sets of the minimum and maximum values. And you see that the minimum values are pretty much, they're all positive, right? And they're around 100 milliseconds. It's, and there's some variation around that. And the, the maximum values tend to be a little bit too large. So one could still fix this model, but it's good enough for our purposes because we have sufficient data and the posterior will not be heavily affected by the prior. Right, so even though these prior predictive distributions are not spectacular, they are a huge improvement over the uniform prior uh, driven prior predictive distributions that we saw earlier. Okay, so relatively speaking, this is a huge improvement. But we could do better. But anyway, so that was the prior predictive data using the BRM function. Okay, so what's cool about this BRMS package is that you can produce most of the you know functionality that you would have to do by hand in R or some other tool, you can produce it through the function BRM. And so this is a very useful package for doing quick data analysis, right? As long as you know what you're doing, right? So what we are doing now is that we're gonna fit this model to the data. Now we are actually gonna fit the model with a log normal likelihood with these prior specifications. These are the ones that we just chose, right? And what you could do, I haven't done this here because it'd be too much text on the screen but you could just simply type this out, uh, the, the result of fitting this model. So this is the object that I created, this BRMS object, right? If I print this out on the command line in R, I would get a verbose output, which will tell me everything that I need to know about the parameters posteriors and the summary statistics and so on, right? So you should try that out yourself, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do next is in the next lecture, I will summarize the results of the analysis and I will also show you how to compare different models, right, using different posterior predictive data. So the, diff the pr posterior predictive data that different models will generate, we can compare them to see which model makes more sense for the given data that we have. That's how we actually do data analysis when we're trying to decide on a likelihood and decide, trying to decide on priors, we look at the prior and the posterior predictive data to decide on which kind of likelihood I'm gonna choose or which kind of priors we're gonna choose. So that's coming up next.